Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday, Shavua Tov. Uh, we'll begin today's uh, shofar inspo with a question. So the question is, in terms of teshuva, um, what is the attitude that we have to our teshuva? Is this uh, something that we do every single year? We ask for forgiveness. Is this something uncomfortable? Um, do we have to feel guilty about this, that we're, that we're doing tshuva yet again? Or this is something to embrace, something to celebrate, something to be happy about, to have simcha about the fact that we're able to do tshuva. So we will address this question by, um, by exploring a, a different acronym to the month of Elo. So last week we spoke about Elo, in the month of Elo, we increased in Torah, more study of Torah in terms of quantity um, and in terms of quality, uh, the quality of our study and the intention, the tefillah, that we pray more, uh, and, we, uh, and we also with more intention, and tzedakah, we increase in the giving of tzedakah, and also teshuva, and our belief in the coming of Mashiach, and we, uh, we explore different acronyms, which have to do with the month of Elo. And today, we're going to introduce a new acronym to the month of Elo, which is uh, the acronym of Aron Luchos Vishivri Luchos. So, in the 40 days, uh, starting from the first of Elo until Yom Kippur, is with the, the day that Moshe, these are the 40 days that Moshe, our teacher Moses, went onto the mountain and ha had us completely forgiven. Moshe, we're familiar with the story that Moshe comes down from the mountain and he sees the Jewish people serving idols. He takes the, 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 the tablet and he, 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 and he crushes them he, like, and they all shatter. Um, then he goes back on the mountain and we're completely forgiven. So it's interesting that uh, when the Jewish people finally created a tabernacle and later on when the, 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 the temple was in Israel, uh, the holiest place in the world is Jerusalem. The holiest place in Jerusalem is the Temple Mount. The holiest place on the Temple Mount is the Temple. The holiest place in the, uh, in the Temple is the Holy of Holies. We open the Holy of Holies, there's the Ark, and we open the Ark, and what's inside? The second tablets, which are a symbol of Teshuva, because Moshe made them after he broke the first ones, it's a symbol of Teshuva. And also, the little pieces, the Talmud teaches that also the little shards of the stones of the first one, they gather them and they put them in there. From here we see that our teshuva is very special. It's not that we try to erase our past and we try to make believe that our past didn't happen. We somehow incorporate our past and we, and we incorporate that into our life. It's part of our story and we celebrate that. Yeah, and as a matter of fact, it says that the makim shabalit tshuva omdin, where where someone who does tshuva is even tzaddikim, even a great tzaddik, even a very righteous person is not on their level. So there was someone who was once in a um, who was discussing the meeting with the Rebbe, and he was discussing this this uh, this idea that it says in the Talmud that about the tshuva, someone who who has corrected their past. Uh, and to, to one degree or another, we're all, all, all of us, or the rest of us, I should say, are on that level. So he says, how can we say that he's greater than a tzaddik? So the Rebbe uh, gave a very interesting parable. He said, let me ask you a question. If you, someone takes a picture, okay, of, of a mountain, okay, it's a beautiful picture, it's, it's, it's an, a, a, an exact exposure of the mountain, how much is this photograph worth? Not much. But if someone were to stand and to um, and to actually paint the picture of the mountain, uh, and he was a, and he was a good artist, that would be that's quite that's quite uh, that's something which is quite valuable. So what's why is that? And and the reason for that is is that even though the picture is a direct ex exact exposure, it's it just there's nothing special about it. What makes a, a painting so beautiful? Is the imperfection it's it's that subjective side of it you see the human within it it's perfectly imperfect and that's what we celebrate in the month of Elo 
the fact that we're perfectly imperfect and we incorporate our past. Wherever we're coming from shouldn't be forgotten. It's not like we just forget some, you know, spiritual amnesia. We have to get where we're coming from. But somehow, wherever we're coming from is part of our story and somehow makes us better people. And therefore, this whole process is a happy process. And therefore, this process, when it comes, when it comes every single year, uh, when Elo comes around, it's not like, oh, I have to apologize again, like I did the same mistake. Like someone who was sort of on a diet and sort of broke their diet and is like, oh, here I am again, you know, in the same place. It's not. As a matter of fact, the, um, there's an ex- Hasidic thought gives, uh, gives an example of a spiral staircase. So sometimes we're in the same place. And we're going to spiral staircase, but we're one flight higher. We're in the same place, one flight higher. So every single year we do teshuva, we embrace our past, we embrace our future, and, uh, and we take this with faith. And so, a practical takeaway from, from today's get-together are three special things that we do in the month of Elo. One is we check our mezuzahs and our tefillin, at the very least, uh, in the, at least twice uh, every seven years. So, um, some people have a custom when, uh, when, uh, when you change the clock, you check the fire alarms you know, twice a year. But so, so too, um, an Elo, when Elo comes around, we uh, check our mezuzahs. Uh, if we haven't done it recently, for sure we should do that. We go to a, a reputable scribe uh, and, and check our mezuzahs to make sure they're up to par. That's one thing we do. Secondly, we recite in the prayers every single day, uh, uh, look out for it, Psalm 27. Let David Hashem Ori, a special psalm we recite in the month of Elo. And uh, the reason for that is, is because the name of God is mentioned in Psalm 27, you can count 13 times. 13 is the, is the special number for the month of Elo. As a matter of fact, uh, in the introduction to the book of Zohar, it says that there's a 13-petaled rose. And, uh, and has, just the same way a rose is um, has, he's referring to a special 13-petaled rose, so too, the Jewish people are, in, are encircled with 13 attributes of God's mercy. And that's why we recite that, um, that psalm twice a day. Ledav and Hashem Uri, Hashem is my light. And thirdly and finally, I is accustomed to write Shana Tova cards. So the reason for this, the Rebbe says, is it's just not something, it's not only something just nice and something classy to write a card. Uh, it's a nice thing to do. You don't see cursive anymore when you see print, and it's, it's always nice to get a handwritten letter in the mail or to, to write a handwritten letter. But what's, uh, what's important here is that we wish each other, may you be written in the book of life. So there are three levels. There's thought, there's speech, and action. So when we actually put a pen to paper and we write, may you be written and sealed in the book of life, we're bringing it one level closer to reality. And Hashem should bless us, every single one of us, that we should be written and sealed in the book of life and happiness and only good things ahead. And now the chauffeur. Marsha, you have any you have any questions?